For God so loved the world, he gave. You know, uh, that's what uh, Christmas time's about, is us acknowledging what God has given. You know, the angels came to the shepherds and it says, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which shall be, does it say to some people or all people? All, all, all people. And you know, uh, we can enjoy, and, and you know, those blessings came uh, when God blessed Abraham, didn't it? Out of, uh, you know, uh, uh, put up um, um, Genesis 12, 3. Genesis 12, 3. And I think this is important to understand because uh, God said uh, to Abraham when he, when he called him, and Abraham, you know, he was, uh, uh, you know, he, he was called over to the land of Israel. And, and God said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So, these people that are uh, cursing Israel on these college campuses, God is going to curse them. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Because, it, because the Word says He is. And so, uh, uh, we need to uh, acknowledge Israel. Um, and, um, but as we look at the love of God, uh, sometimes it's hard to comprehend how God, who created us, uh, uh, would love us when we have failed Him in our lives. I mean, it is for me. You know, I fail God every week, sometimes, somehow or another. Uh, you know, or every day sometimes. And I said, Scott, how could you, you know, how can you put up with me, you know? And, um, and he just comes back, well, because I love you. And I oh, man. You know, I mean, I, I wanted to, you know, do something. Uh, but, uh, you know, as we come into this Christmas season, I want us to know that God loves you. And God is the only hope that we have. And Christ is the only hope that we have. I mean, there is no salvation outside of what God has provided. There is no salvation in religion. There is no salvation in church denomination. There is no salvation in anything except the person of Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. And so, uh, whether you're at the woman at the well who had a, uh, a past of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of uh, sin, uh, or whether you were, uh, in, you know, that's in uh, John, uh, John chapter 4, or you're a ruler uh, that come to Jesus as, as Nicodemus in John chapter 3, came to Jesus by night. I like to call him Nick at night. And so, but there is only one, one hope that we have in this world of not perishing to hell fire, and his name is Jesus. All right, and so um, I'm going to uh, uh, let's go to John chapter 3, and I'm going to uh, I want to read uh, some out of John chapter 3 uh, this morning. Uh, the book of John is amazing. Uh, as we go into the Christmas season, uh, I want us to understand some things that God did send his only begotten son into the world. And it says um, in John chapter 3, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now this wasn't just a normal Jew. This was a ruler of the Jews. This was a, a teacher. This was a rabbi. I mean, this was a uh, you know uh, ruler of the Jews. Uh, and the same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, old Nick had been checking out Jesus. You know, I mean, he had, he had seen Jesus. Uh, I don't know what miracles he saw, but and Nicodemus had saw some miracles that Jesus did. I don't know, maybe he saw Jesus heal somebody, or maybe he uh, seen Jesus open the eyes of a blind, or, or feed the multitude. Uh, whatever Nic uh, Nicodemus saw, he, he says, man, he's, he's trying to figure it out because the rest of his uh, uh, buddies in the uh, uh, Sanhedrin and all this says, hey, this Jesus fella, he's just a fraud. This Jesus fella, he's no good. And so Nicodemus, he wants to find out for himself, and he comes to Jesus by night and says, we know you're a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. You know, and so Nicodemus had some stuff figured out. And in verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
And you know, a lot of people, we want to get into the kingdom of God, we want to go to heaven, but unless a person is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of, of heaven. We need to understand that because a lot of people, they go around saying, oh, I'm okay, you're okay, it's all good, and all this stuff, and it's not all good. I'm going to explain that to you a little bit later. And uh, it says, uh, so, and it says, Nicodemus uh, says in him, verse 4, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time to his mother's womb and be born? And uh, so he's trying to figure out uh, this thing in his mind. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In order for you to enter into the king of, uh, kingdom of God, you have to be born into God's kingdom. You have to be born again into God's kingdom. And when you become born again into God's kingdom, we can pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, because we are born into the kingdom of God. It says in verse 6, Jesus said this, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And I want to just proclaim right here that that verse has delivered my soul from a lot of uh, torment. Because, you know, uh, I'd be uh, in the flesh and, and you know, Jesus uh, would, would uh, bring this verse to mind. Whatever is born of the uh, flesh is flesh and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. And, you know, uh, the flesh cannot take away from the Spirit. Amen? Amen. When we are in the Spirit of God, uh, God, uh, we are saved, we are born again and, and you know, the devil can't do nothing about it, and the flesh can't do nothing about it, right? Now, the flesh can uh, misbehave. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> now, uh, it says, uh, verse 7, Marvel not that I said of thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and, hear, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now that's a question you can ask the smart boys. Where does the wind come from? Where does it go? Alright. Verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? He's trying to figure this out. How can these things be? And Jesus answered and said to him, Art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things? How many preachers, how many teachers do we have in churches that do not know the Spirit of God? They don't know that God has to be inside of them. They don't know that they need to be born again. Then verse 11, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak. And I want you to notice the pronoun here. I know we have a lot of things about pronouns nowadays. <laughs> Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify what we have seen, and you receive not our witness. Who is Jesus talking to? We and our. He's talking about him and the Father. Right? Look at it. You don't receive our witness. So Jesus and the Father were one. But uh, you don't receive our witness. And you know, the Holy Spirit is in there too. You don't receive the, the witness of the Spirit. You're not receiving the testimony of Jesus. You're not receiving the drawing of the Father. It says in verse 12, If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? That's right. Yeah. Yes. Man. Yes. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. He said, man, I, you know, he, Jesus told him where he came from. He came from heaven. No man ascended up to heaven, but I came from heaven. Verse 14, And, Mo, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now that's kind of a strange verse in the midst of all this. I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. Verse 15, and, whatsoever, and, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn us, because why? Because we're condemned already. 
Right. It says in verse seven, uh, 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. There it is, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. There's only one way you can get saved, folks. And that's through Jesus. Amen. Verse 19, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and that men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, and his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, Lord. I just pray, Father God, that Lord, we'd get this inside of us today, in Jesus' name. Now, when Jesus reveals himself to us, it has to be on a spiritual plane. It cannot be on, uh, well, you know... Uh, here's the here's the prescription. You got to go to church. If you really want to get spiritual, go to the Baptist church. Uh, you know, um, whatever. I mean, it's not a uh, you know, it's not a you know, do this and receive this type of thing. Now, uh, the, it, salvation. I want to add here. Salvation is conditional upon repentance. Okay. So um, so Jesus said that repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As so was, it has to be on a spiritual plane. Unless one is born of the Spirit of God, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And when we are born again, God is our Father. For God so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son, right? Now, God's gift of His Son is the good news of the gospel, and is, it is the good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And so the gift of the Son of God. Now, um, I want to go to Jeremiah uh, chapter 3. Uh, a man, and I, uh, I just want to uh, uh, Jeremiah 31. I'm sorry, verse three. I want to uh, share some verses out of Jeremiah uh, 31. And Jeremiah 31 is is uh, God is comforting Israel with the promise of restoration. You know, we said to Israel a while ago, Israel's been a mess for a lot of years, so, but uh, but God is going to restore Israel, and so. And this, uh, this is the context of, of Jeremiah 31. And um, let's, let's start at uh, verse 3 there. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with what kind of love? Everlasting. An everlasting love. I mean, God is loving Israel. God is loving us with an everlasting love. And he says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That's why I say, people are here by divine appointment, by his loving kindness, he, he draws us unto himself. And you know, his, uh, his uh, business is not to, uh, to uh, you know, just uh, pass over sin, his business is to for forgive our sin. Right? And so, you know, a lot of people say, well, you'll love me if you pass over my sin. No, that's not love. We, lo we love people when we deliver them from sin. Amen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know how that happens in a minute. Now, and down in verse uh, 9, it says, They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way where uh, they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So he became their father. And it says um, down in verse 14, And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Now, he's saying that, but right in the middle of this, of this chapter is... Um, is a reference to when Jesus was born and they killed the children. And can you imagine having a death sentence put on you before you are two years old? Jesus had it. Okay? And this satanic uh, uh, business about destroying Israel, about destroying God out of the mist has been around us a long time. It, had, it didn't start with Hamas. It started a long time ago. Because it says in verse 15, Thus saith the Lord, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Because there was a death sentence upon all the children from two years old and under. You know, King Herod, uh, he, wanted, he didn't 
didn't want any rivals because of this King Jesus fellow. And so he says he just sent uh, out uh, his soldiers or whatever. He says, I want you to go uh, into Israel. I want you to kill every, every child two years old and under. And can you imagine them going right into houses and stabbing your one-year-old child or your two-year-old child? Shedding their blood. It's kind of what happened... October 7th. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. It's still the same demonic spirit. It is. Yeah. But in the midst of in, in the midst of uh, God comforting Israel with the promise of restoration, that verse is in there. Verses 18 and 19 I have surely heard Ephraim be bemoaning himself thus Thou hast chastised me and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. You ever say that to the Lord? You ever pray that? God, I need you to turn me. I need you to bend me. I, I, Lord, I, I know in, in this stubborn will of mine, is not your will. I need you to turn me. Verse 19 says, Surely after that I was turned, I repented. See, God turns us to Him, and then after we're turned, He says, I repented. And after that, uh, I was instructed. So after repentance, we, we gain instruction, and that's what Sunday school is about. That's what Bible study is about. That's what coming into the Word of God is about. We receive instruction. And I smote upon my thigh, and I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is anybody here proud of all the things they did in their youth? No. We don't want to go there. We'll move smartly along here. But you know, I'm glad that God loves us, aren't you? Yes. Now, God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God becoming flesh was the only way that God chose to save us. And uh, back to uh, our text in um, John uh, 3, 13. I, uh, I commented on this a while ago, but 3. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Alright, so, um, so God uh, chose uh, to come to us. We did not go to Him. God came to us, you see. He invaded humanity. And then uh, it says in verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. God came down here to human, uh, uh, humankind, and He says, uh, I've got to be lifted up, like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. What about the serpent being raised up? What's that about? What's that about? Let's go to Numbers chapter 21 is where it's found. Numbers chapter 21. And they, uh, this was the children of Israel. And maybe some of us are like the children of Israel today. Maybe we're discouraged in our soul. That's how children of Israel work. Verse 4, it says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea and to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Is your soul ever discouraged because the way God is leading you? Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes it's more, it's, it's deeper than the outside. It's in the soul. Our soul gets discouraged. And the people, verse 5, and the people spake against God and against Moses. Now when our soul gets discouraged, it's not a good idea to speak against God. But the people, they speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul, we, we loathe this light bread, this manna. We're tired of this manna stuff. We're tired of your provision, God. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, 
and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Now everybody here's got a snake story sometime. No. Uh, but the Lord, I mean, here so all of a sudden, you know, God, He's you know the creator of the universe. He gathers up the snakes, these fiery serpents, and He lets them. He lets Israel get bit because His protection is not on them. And a lot of people to, in today's world, they think that God's protection is on them because they had a godly grandmother. Or they live in the United States. They think God's protection is on them and they can sin all they want and still make it into heaven. That's not true. God sent the fiery serpents into Israel and they bit them. <clears throat> now, um, in verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Man, we're, we're in trouble here. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a, a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So the Lord is saying, okay, I want you to make a fiery serpent out of brass. You know, this brass snake. Put it on a pole and lift it up. And when the people look on it, they can be healed. And in um, verse 9, And Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it upon a pole, and it came to pass. If, the serp if the, a serpent had bitten any man... When he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Now we know what the poison of the serpent is, don't we? It's called sin. Alright? Now, the reason that God sent the serpents was because of ingratitude and complaining. Now we don't ever complain, do we? Sin was in the camp. Every one of us has sometimes have been guilty of ingratitude and murmuring or complaining. I remember when I was working in the oil fields, we'd tell each other that we had two rights, complaining and quitting. Now, we called it a different word besides complaining, but anyway. Now, we, uh, we will give ourselves permission to complain from time to time, and somehow it, it makes us think that we have that right when we complain. And you know, sometimes we complain against God. God, why don't you, you know, why don't you make this person behave, you know, or something? That's what Gene prays about me. You know. Uh, now, and I'm glad Jesus did not complain to God about us, but prayed for us instead. The only hope any of us have is when, is when we go and look upon the Son of God on Calvary's cross. That's the only cure for the snake bite. That's the only cure for sin. If we do not come and behold the Son of God, we will die in our sins. You are outside the protection of God for your soul. Now, God calls us out of love towards us. Right? Everyone here is because God loves you. Now, let me just say right here, True love is not overlooking sin. True love is rescuing people out of it. I'll say that again. True love is not overlooking sin. True love is rescuing people out of it. Can you imagine the evangelism that took place in the wilderness as the people that were snake bit were told of the only cure? Hey, I, I heard, uh, uh, you know... Uh, uh, this guy, he, he went over and, and Moses uh, you know, uh, set up this serpent in the wilderness and if you go look on it, you would be cured of your snake bite. Can you imagine somebody uh, saying to the snake bit person, I'm okay, you're okay. <laughs> it's all good. No! People are dying and going to hell. People are dying in their sin. And we have the only cure. His name is Jesus. Amen. True love is not overlooking sin. True love is rescuing people out of it. Right. 
Right. And we, if, we, if, we, if we will understand that, that, that uh, people need a cure for their snake bite, people need a cure for their sin, people need a cure, and the only cure is the, the, the Christ uh, on Calvary's cross. He told Nicodemus as the Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. See, Jesus so loved us that he paid the penalty and took the punishment for our sin so he could save us from destruction. Now this morning, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is symbolic of the shed blood and the broken body of Jesus. When he was uh, on the cross, he shed his blood. Now, Jesus looked upon us, and God gave bankrupted heaven, and he sent his only begotten son from heaven to earth. says it in John chapter 3. He sent his only begotten son, and his son came here, for the purpose of God to cure us of sin, cure us of the snake bite. And He's the only way. He's the only provision, just like the serpent in the wilderness. He was, they were, there was only provision. There had already been some people died in Israel. But the serpent was the only provision. Do you know, later on, Hezekiah, had to the king, had to destroy that serpent because Israel had made an idol out of it? He had to destroy that serpent. And you know, people make idols out of the cross. They make idols out of everything today. And the cross was a shameful uh, you know, form of death. I mean, did you know it was illegal to crucify a Roman citizen? Yeah. yeah, it was too hideous of a death. And at the cross, God took all of our sin and placed it on Jesus. And then He took Jesus and gave Him to us. And I think God got ripped off. But that, that is the love of God and if, and if you can explain it, you get up here and explain it, because I can't. Amen. I can't explain the love of God. See, God isn't going to pacify sin. But I'll tell you this, God will forgive it. Because of Jesus. God will forgive it because He's the only way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. And this morning, I want us to examine our hearts. This morning, I want us to, uh, to look, at, uh, look inside of ourselves. And uh, do I dare say I want us to judge ourselves? Now, let's see what the Word says. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, uh, For I have received the Lord... That which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Now, I'm glad that Jesus did not make Judas the hypocrite his standard for serving or not serving God. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to go to church because of all those hypocrites, or whatever they say. I tell them I'd rather go to church with a few hypocrites and go to hell with all of them. So there. So uh, there's a, we we have to make the Lord our standard of what we do. And so it says in verse um, 24, and and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me." After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we're to remember 
what the Lord did for us, right? We're to remember, uh, you know, how we got saved. We're to remember the, uh, the way we got saved, right? And um, verse 26, For oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till they come. Now that word show in the Greek language is the word evangelize. You do evangelize. You do show the, the Lord's death till they come. Because uh, that's the only way somebody can get saved is if they come and behold the cross and the penalty for their sin. Verse 27, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. So I want you to examine yourself. I'm not going to examine you. You, you look inside your soul, and you examine yourself. And uh, let it, and so uh, verse 29, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if, you would, if, for if we would judge ourselves, there it is. The rest says we need to judge ourselves. Mm -hmm. For if we would judge ourselves, um, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when, when we are judged, we are chasing the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. All right? So um, I want us to take just a minute, bow our heads and close our eyes. And I, I just want to ask you a couple questions. Is there something in your life, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing here in my life. There's things in my life where I need to repent of. There's things in my life that, you know, I've done that, I mean, you don't even want to hear about my youth, I mean, it's crazy. But you know, there's forgiveness with God, there's love with God, but we have to come to Him the right way. One thing that we need to do, understand, is if we need to forgive somebody, we need to go to that person and forgive them. Mm -hmm. Or if we need to, mm -hmm. if we've done wrong, we need to ask for forgiveness and then come to God. Mm -hmm. I don't want you partaking of the Lord's Supper unworthily and drinking and eating damnation to yourself. It says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many, and many sleep. Now that word sleep is you've, you've died. You went, to, you went to sleep for the last time. And so... Uh, there's a cause, uh, an effect on it. So uh, let's, let's just uh, confess before the Lord. Let's uh, get right with God uh, as, we, as we come to Him and are before Him. Father, we just call upon Your name. Lord, there's so many things in my life that, that I've done and, and do. Lord, that are not pleasing to you. And Lord, I just pray, Father, you'd forgive me of those things. I pray that, Lord, you'd uh, come into uh, our lives, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you'd forgive us. Pray, Father God, that there's any, any that uh, are holding a grudge against us, or we're holding a grudge against any, that we'd go to them. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, the same love and the same sacrifice that you gave for us that we will give for each other. Lord, that's what your word says. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, our lives would be a testimony of you. Our lives would be a testimony of what you've done in our lives. Lord, as we've heard this morning out of several people, Lord, you answer prayer. You forgive our sins. You grow us in the Word. And Lord, I just pray right now. I just want to ask us right now with our eyes closed and our heads bowed, is there anyone here that just needs to receive Christ as their Savior, Lord? Because, you know, that's, part, that's of it. That's, that's of it. You need to look at the cross and say, oh God, I need you to save me. I need you to turn me away from my sin. And I, I, want, to, I want to follow you. And, uh, you know, 
you can wave at me or something, and, and I promise I'll pray for you. Uh, but, uh, you know, the ultimate decision has to between, be between you and the Lord. You know, just because you come into a church doesn't uh, make you saved, you know. Just being in the camp of Israel, you know, didn't uh, make you free from snake bites, you know. And um, so we need to come to the Lord His way and, uh, and, and, uh, and confess our sins before Him. <coughs> Thank you, Father, for forgiving us. Thank you for forgiving us of all of our iniquities and healing us of all of our diseases. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Those that, uh, Sister Sarah, uh, Brother Woody, uh, Brother Wesley, and Brother Little Wesley, come on up. Jesus paid it all. Go ahead and hand that out. <coughs> Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. You know, sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. So as we remember the shed blood and broken body of Jesus, uh, let's, uh, let us come to him the right way. Let us judge ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. And uh, the Lord will, uh, will do His part, I'll guarantee you. He's already done His part on the cross of Calvary. He cannot do any, one more thing than He's already done to save our souls. On Christmas Eve, we're going to have a candlelight communion service here at Friendly First Baptist Church. And, you know, the reason why we have special services, uh, like candlelight communion or something like that, is there's some people that will come to those that won't come to church normally. And uh, I use it for an excuse to preach the gospel to people that I don't normally get to preach to, you know, and, um, because it's the gospel message that can change our life, it's the gospel message that is the power of God and salvation to everyone who believes the word of God says. If anybody has not got served, raise your hand. Uh, I trust everyone got served.
on the same night he was betrayed. Can you imagine that? You know, you ever been betrayed by somebody? Oh, yeah. Well, he took bread. You know, this these little pieces of bread, they got holes in them, and they got stripes on them. It's called matzah bread. And um, there was holes in Christ, and there were stripes on Christ. And uh, they... Uh, this bread represents the body of Christ. The grape juice represents the blood of Christ. And uh, the only way we can be saved is by the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He took bread, he says, take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. And uh, Brother Woody, would you bless the bread? Dear Lord, we thank you for your your Gethsemane, your Garden of Gethsemane, where you said, Thy will be done, Lord, and that you gave your body for us. You were scourged beyond recognition, Lord. You were whipped up. You were uh, spat upon. The Bible says that your beard was plucked out from your face, and you endured all that just for us, Lord, and we thank you for that. By your stripes, we are healed. In your name, amen. 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 Now this uh, grape juice all came out of the same bottle. So um, the blood of Jesus all came out of the same body. And um, it's when we get the blood of Jesus in us and the, the body, uh, if we are in Christ, I should say, um, that's what it's about, isn't it? And you know, Jesus said you must be born again. Uh, you cannot, uh, you know, just remain snake bit and get to heaven. You gotta say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want you to save me. Uh, Brother Wesley, would you uh, pray for me? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you did for us. And dear Lord, we thank you that while we didn't deserve it, that you shed your blood for us. And we thank you for defeating death and taking the victory so that we can win all the battles through you. In, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's take this. When we serve each other, now there's decisions. It can be made public decisions of salvation, following word and baptism, uh, church membership, those things, those types of things. And uh, we can make those uh, before the body of Christ here in Fernley uh, at, at, at any time. And um, I just want to, uh, to let you know that you are here by divine appointment. You've heard the word of God. And uh, I want you to be a blessing to somebody else. And like I said, true love is not pacifying somebody's sin. True love is saying, hey, I know where the cure is. Amen. It's at the cross of Jesus. I know where the cure for your, your depression of your soul is. You see, it's at the cross of Calvary. You know? Amen. Anybody have a word to say before we dismiss? Well, I'm so thankful for our salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Where would we be, church, without Him? We'd be, we'd be chasing our tails through life, trying to make each day better or worse than the last day, living in sin. But He, he died on the cross for our salvation, and He filled us with His precious Holy Spirit. And I don't know how many times I can thank Him for that. And I can't wait to see him to thank him personally. Amen. Amen. Sister Sarah, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this day that we can come and be with our brothers and sisters, worship your name. We pray, Father, that you would um, hide your word.
that we've heard today within our hearts and continue to grow us and change us and make us more like you. Pray, Father, that you would go with each member as we leave here today and that, Lord, your spirit would go through us and, and uh, reach out into a dark and dying world. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church, I just have one footnote to my testimony where I told you how I got here to church and everything. I walked into Pastor Curtis's office the minute I got here and told him who I was, and I said, hi, Reverend. I shouldn't have done that. 